We're fortunate to have with us the presidents of four institutions with state or national winners this year. So I would like to uh, ask them to stand and be recognized. Uh, they are Gerard Buckley, president of the National Technical Institute for the Deaf at Rochester Institute of Technology. Gerard, welcome. Paul Dale, president of Paradise Valley Community College. Paul, where are you? Paul, thanks for being here. Judy Genshaft, president of the University of South Florida. Judy, thanks for being here. And Carrie Israel, president of Collin College. Carrie, thanks for being with us. I'd also like to just take a moment to recognize the members of the governing boards of CASE and of the, County, uh, the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching. Uh, would the trustees of the two organizations please stand and would all of you please join me in thanking them, not only for their support of this program, but for all they do to advance American higher education. Would the two boards please stand? For all of us at Case, one of the great pleasures of this program is working with our colleagues at the Carnegie Foundation. In addition to helping us guide the development of the awards, the foundation underwrites a portion of the costs of administering the program. Uh, they also provide a $5,000 monetary award to each of our national winners. Most important, the foundation conducts the final round of judging that leads to the selection of the four national winners. Leading the team at Carnegie is Dr. Anthony Breich. Tony became the foundation's ninth president in 2008. Previously, he taught at Stanford University and at the University of Chicago, where he helped found the Center for Urban School Improvement. Would you please join me in welcoming Dr. Tony Breich to the lectern. Tony. <clears throat> Uh, I thought, by the way, even though the election season's over, I would be appropriately red, white, and blue, just so I'm, I'm not quite finished with all the campaigning. Um, thank you, John. Uh, we are now in our third decade of co-sponsoring this event with the Council for the Advancement and Support of Education. And John, as always, it's a pleasure to share this work with you. Uh, I would also like to personally recognize our longstanding partner in this event, TIA CREF, represented today by uh, Kevin Moultrie. Uh, Kevin, we share those 12 years of Catholic education, by the way. <laughs> um, in, in its initial uh, incarnation, the Carnegie Foundation played a major policy role in securing pensions for college and university faculty, so uh, something probably few of you know, but that was our early history. And in that capacity, we were actually responsible for the initiation of TIA, and we eventually became TIA CREF. And, um, we're delighted to see how well our offspring has done. And the only thing I say is that when I, on occasion, look at the state of our endowment, I wish one of my predecessors had held on to a little bit of what you've done. Uh, Under Secretary Cantor, state and national Professors of the Year award winners and their honored guests, it is a pleasure to be with you today on this very special occasion. Today we honor our nation's very best college and university professors. Although I'm, I am meeting our award winners for the first time today, I feel as if I know a great deal about each of them, having an, had an opportunity to review their teaching portfolios and to read the inspiring comments offered by their students and colleagues. Late each summer, John and I have the privilege of calling the national award winners to share the good news. Uh, John, I think you'll agree that making these calls is a truly make your day experience. Um, coincidentally, I just returned from Oslo, Norway, where I had been invited to address their National Research Council to talk about the new work that's going on at the Carnegie Foundation on improving teaching and learning in our nation's schools, colleges, and universities. Uh, Oslo, as you probably know, is the uh, home of the Nobel Peace Prize. And while I was there, 
I had an opportunity to visit the Nobel Peace Center and the extraordinary venue where our president, Barack Obama, three years ago, received the Peace Prize. While I was touring about with my gracious Norwegian host, I was asked if I knew this common joke often told among Norwegian children about the speculation that ensues just prior to any such prize announcement. And I confess that I, I didn't. Well, did I know that a scarecrow had recently been nominated for the prize? I kind of paused. A scarecrow, I asked? Oh, yes, for being outstanding in his field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that kind of joke. Uh, it's, it's actually a good thing my 16-year-old daughter isn't here today. Because when, when I repeat a joke like this, she's, she's wont to kind of turn and look at me and think, kind of shake her head and say, oh, Dad, keep it to yourself. Uh, returning to more serious matters. Today, we are among our nation's most accomplished educators, all of whom are indeed outstanding. We are assembled here appropriately in the National Press Building to celebrate their individual accomplishments. Today's national winners and our state winners as well have drawn on the best of what we know in their respective disciplines, from basic cognitive and science and learning theory, evidence-based instructional practice, and then added that bit of spice that is their individual creativity to orchestrate extraordinary learning opportunities for their students in their classrooms. Case and the Carnegie Foundation proudly celebrates these individuals and their accomplishments because rightfully so, they are indeed special. Each of our state and national winners has embraced a special calling to teach. Each of you bring extraordinary leadership to your classrooms. My challenge to you today is to extend your leadership out more broadly to your departments, colleges, and universities, and your respective professional fields. I'm reminded of that old 1960s Bob Dylan song, The Times They Are Changing. An extraordinary constellation of forces is now merging together. The stable ground, education as we have known it for a long time, is shaking. The institutional tectonic plates are shifting. We are now asking our colleges and universities to advance more ambitious academic outcomes for many more students than ever before. We also want our nation's classrooms to be more engaging and responsive to the diverse interests and needs of all of our students. Far too many of our students walk away from higher education failing to complete their programs and achieving a degree. And the cost of higher education continues to mount. Much like health care, exceeding the annual inflation rate year after year for decades now. This cannot continue. Like in healthcare, we expect our schools and colleges to become more efficient in the way they use their resources. Advancing on any one of these goals, increasing overall effectiveness, enhancing student engagement, becoming more resource efficient, would be quite ambitious. Moving simultaneously on all three what we at Carnegie now call the triple aims of educational improvement is indeed unprecedented. Yet that is the calling we face today. It is this challenge that speaks to each of our award winners today to take on the mantle of leadership. Now I know that some believe that educational policy will bring about the needed institutional transformations. For example, we might change the way we hold institutions of higher education accountable and how we might fund them. And others might argue that technology is the answer, that the emergence of massive open online courses, MOOCs, 
what a strange name, uh, that they will solve the problems we now confront. Uh, certainly, we need prudent policy that, ni that nurtures human creativity and supports innovation. Likewise, the affordance of technology are a powerful but still largely untapped resource for educational improvement. We need to exploit this more fully. But I'm also reminded, however, that anything worthy of the name education is at its base a deeply personal and social enterprise. Although the places of schooling and the tools we use to educate may be drastically altered in the years ahead, at the center of education remains that very human connection where teachers encounter students around subject matter. It is that for this reason that teachers like you, reaching out beyond your classrooms to your departments, your colleges and universities, and your respective disciplinary fields are the key to the changes we now seek. We live in a world of very complex systems. While in yesteryear, we may have celebrated the lone cowboy, the lone ranger. As a child, I actually love Tonto and Hio Silver. The problems we must address today are far too complex for any one person to solve. Our power then is not as individual teachers and scholars, but rather in working together using disciplined inquiry to improve teaching and learning. Quite simply, we can accomplish more together than even the best of us can accomplish alone. When we structure our work together in networked communities, one that gather and regularly use evidence to improve, there is a genuine wisdom of crowds. Engaging together in disciplined inquiries is also the key to attaining the kind of learning and teaching we want in our classrooms and advancing at scale the triple aims of educational improvement. Each of you here who is an award winner today, you are outstanding in your fields, inspired and inspiring. I entreat each of you to reach beyond the traditional domains of your individual classrooms, to work together in networked improvement communities. You are the change we seek. You are indeed the change we need. At this point, John, it's my pleasure to turn the proceedings back on, over to you. Let us celebrate. Thank you, Tony. Well, Tony, you, your, your remarks have provided a wonderful introduction to these awards and the work of these outstanding professors. I must say, having heard your articulate remarks, Kevin's articulate remarks, Under Secretary Cantor's articulate remarks, I need to get me one of them Catholic educations. <laughs> Um, but I'll muddle through. 